Claude Bemis, your writing coach, here to help you with generating amazing ideas for stories. Today, we're going to look at endowed objects, those possessions that your character treasures, and how those special objects can give emotional impact to your story. The word endowed simply means something that has great value, meaning, or purpose. Any object that has special significance to your character can be an endowed object. Maybe it's a key or a photograph. Maybe it's a cozy house, or maybe it's a blood-stained soccer ball. Its value doesn't come from how expensive the object is or what it can do. The value comes from the emotional connection your character has to the object. It is a treasure because of what it means to your character. For King Arthur, Excalibur isn't an endowed object because it's a powerful weapon or because it's a bejeweled sword. It's an endowed object because it represents for Arthur that he and he alone is the rightful king of England. Excalibur shows Arthur's legitimacy as a ruler. Having that specific sword reminds him of his duty as a good king. There are many nice examples of endowed objects in Lord of the Rings. The One Ring, of course, also Aragorn's reforged sword, Anduril, and Boromir's Horn of Gondor that gets broken in two when he dies. But my favorite is the simple box of salt that Samwise Gamgee brings with him on his journey with Frodo to destroy the ring. That little box of salt is an important reminder of the home they've left behind. Salt enhances flavor for food, which adds a layer of symbolism that Sam and Frodo don't want to lose the appreciation of the simple pleasures on their terrible quest. At one point, Sam drops the box of salt as they are ascending a steep mountain on the way to Mordor, but Frodo catches it, a close call, and a sign that Frodo and Sam are struggling to hold on to that hope of home back in the Shire. It's as if if they lose the salt, they would lose the Shire. Tolkien nicely returns to that box of Shire salt throughout the story. It's a minor thing, but it has major psychological impact on the reader. In a way, endowed objects are like talismans. In many legends and myths, the hero receives a magical talisman, often a necklace or a weapon that gives them protection. Think of the endowed object as something that gives your character emotional protection rather than magical protection. Or they can be like a cursed object, something that represents your character's fears. Think of Captain Hook and his watch. That watch is an endowed object, even though Hook doesn't have it anymore. The watch now lies in the belly of a crocodile who bit Hook's hand off. This crocodile has had a taste for Hook and wants to eat him. But Hook is always warned of the crocodile's approach by the ticking clock. A ticking clock is a common symbol of death. Time runs out for all of us. Hook is afraid of that crocodile, but also of his mortality. The ticking watch in the crocodile's belly works wonderfully as this sort of negative endowed object. Ultimately, an endowed object can be anything, as long as it's deeply meaningful to your character. Dice a pocket knife, a photograph with a message written on the back, a perfect shell, a broken shell. What's nice about a simple object is that it gets readers wondering why your character cares so much about that plain old cufflink or seashell. The eventual reveal of the backstory can illuminate your character's motivations and emotions in a wonderful and surprising way. It can give readers that moment of going, Ah, that's why she carries that everywhere she goes. It's nice also when the symbolic meaning of the object isn't obvious. Sure, a throne is obviously important to a queen because it symbolizes her power. And a character who dreams of becoming the first female professional baseball player might have a treasured baseball glove. That seems super obvious. But what if the baseball glove's emotional meaning for your character had nothing to do with sports. What if your character hates baseball, but the glove was the last thing her mom gave her before dying in a plane crash? Or what if during vicious arguments between her parents, your character would lock herself in the bedroom, placing the glove over her face 
to hide the sound of her crying. That's heartbreaking. And it can make a big impact on your readers, especially when they learn that backstory. The object would become a reminder of some emotional wound that needs healing. It's an object that has come to shape your character's identity or way of looking at their life. In my office, I have a casting box. It's a collection of interesting and meaningful objects I've collected throughout my life. There's a divination practice that uses casting boxes to read the future. Mine is mostly just for creative inspiration. When I'm spending time in my imagination thinking about a character in one of my stories, I might reach into my casting box and pull something out. Then I just try to brainstorm possibilities for how this could be an endowed object for my character. Let's practice together. Say I pulled out this silver dollar. What could the story be for why it's so important? It's from 1923, so it would have been in circulation during the Great Depression. Maybe the coin belonged to our character's grandfather, who carried it through the Depression and never spent it, no matter how hungry he got at times. It was his last resort coin, but things never got that bad. Now, things are bad for our character, his grandson, and he's holding on to the coin for comfort and hope, but what if things get so bad he's tempted to sell it? What would the consequences in our story be for that. Or maybe we have a character who doesn't trust himself to make good choices. So when he's presented with a difficult decision, he flips the coin to decide what to do. He believes it's his guide and good luck charm, but then he loses the coin at a critical juncture. Or the coin's luck seems to send him into dire circumstances. How would his feelings for the coin and for himself change? Or maybe our character is a pickpocket who stole the coin, but then had a change of heart. Guilt compels her to return the coin to its owner, but she can't find the owner no matter how hard she tries. In each of those situations, the object has emotional importance and symbolic importance. It represents the character's hope or self-doubt or guilt. Ultimately, endowed objects are usually lost or given up. It helps force the character into emotional change. It marks a turning point for the character in the story. Even if the endowed object is only lost or given up temporarily, our character will react to the loss or react to the recovery. There will be major consequences. They will make a difficult decision in order to get the endowed object back or to accept how they've now changed and maybe no longer need the object. There are so many fun ways to play with endowed objects. And you probably have endowed objects that are special to you. Something you'd be devastated to ever lose. A stuffed animal or a toy, a photograph. Find ways to draw on those personal experiences to give your story more depth and emotional impact. So here's what I want you to do. Take a character in the story you're working on. Give him, her, or them an endowed object. Create a backstory for how your character got the object and why it's so important. Brainstorm six different ways the object could be lost or given up. What would drive your character to that point? How would your character react afterwards? It'll give you new and interesting ideas for your story and for deepening your character. Endowed objects are more than just props. They are extensions of our character's desires and fears. These objects can be the very obstacles keeping our characters from changing, or they can be the means of our characters growing to become an unforgettable hero. I hope this video gives you new ideas for how to use endowed objects in your story. Thanks for joining me here today. I hope you'll share the video with other writers and creatives that you know. Leave me a message in the comments or on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm John Claude Bemis. Want to find out more about how I support writers through manuscript critiques, writing workshops, school visits? Then visit my website, johnclaudebemis.com. Go dream what only you could dream and go write the story that only you could possibly write. I'll see you next time.